All right, so I'm updating the SSD in a Dell XPS 13 9360. Process will be pretty similar for just about all laptops. I'll go through this one as the example, but you know, variations for yours won't be too much. Just so obviously you'll need the drive, laptop, and an NVMe to USB enclosure. While I'm at it, I'm also going to replace the battery in this one as the battery is down to about 64% of its original capacity. You'll need a set of precision screwdrivers with probably Torx bits. This one requires small Torx bits. And you'll need a USB drive, at least 16 gig minimum. This one's 32 for booting into Linux to be able to clone the image, clone the drive. All right. So... Before you get started doing anything, let's get cracking into those parts and um, get our NVMe drive installed in this USB adapter so we're ready to go. Pull it out, get rid of the box. There's some instructions, you might need to read those. Um, hopefully you'll get a few bits in yours, USB-C cable, high speed. You might get some screws. This one uses little rubber bugs in place of a screw. It's also got a thermal pad. I'm not going to do that while I'm transferring, cloning the drive. I'll put that on once I've taken the 256 gig out of this laptop and I'll put it on that. In the meantime, I'll just run this without the case on it to make sure there's plenty of airflow to help keep it cool. And of course, there's a little aluminium heatsink as well. And Get rid of this housing, and here's the case. You can see it's got a um, USB-C port on the end of it, a little power light, and we can get into it on this end. So crack that open, take that lid off. This one just slides apart. And that's where we install our NVMe drive. So. I've got a crucial two terabyte. It's a PCIe 3.0 Express, um, 3.0. Uh, it's actually a times four. The Dell, in their infinite wisdom, decided to restrict the PCI Express to a low power mode, which means it's only using the equivalent of a times two, but times four is backwards compatible. So, you know, it's fine. You just won't get full performance out of it, but at least we'll have a lot more space. So, go ahead. Open this one up too. So what we've got again some instructions. I've done this before, so I don't need those. But I really would recommend that if it's the first time you do read through them, there's some tips. Of course, when you're handling any PCBs, micro components. Make sure you're not rubbing your feet on the carpet. Discharge yourself to the bench, something metal if you can. You know, they're pretty pretty tough, but in terms of electrostatic discharge these days, but still, do what you can to minimize the risk. So we go. So this, you can see there's two ends. There's the end that goes in the, um, with the connector pins on it. And we've got an end that normally has a screw in it, but in this case, got those little rubber things. So it inserts, just bring it up here at an angle, something like this. Lines up there. So that'll just wiggle on in. So you can see the angles that that's at. Now, if you've got a screw, use a screw. This one comes with these little rubber things. Out. There we go. Get rid of the other one. Comes with two. You only need one. It's just a spare in case you lose one. So you come up here and slide that in there. And down we go into the hole. That's it. We're inserted. Okay. And that'll do for now. Like I said, I won't use the heat sink because I'll save that for later. Good. 
Er det USB-C kabel her? Plug that in. Great. And I'll just plug that into the USB-C port on this laptop. All right. Also gonna, the NVMe drive comes with a screw and we will use that later. Definitely don't use that. And I'm plugging my USB for now. There she is, there's a hole here somewhere. There we go. All right, we're good to go to get started. So I'll boot into Windows and I'll walk you through the next steps. First thing you need to do is disable device encryption if it's enabled. So just type in your search, search box and you'll get device encryption settings. Open that up, make sure it's turned off. The purpose of device encryption is to stop someone either taking the drive out of your computer, putting it in another machine and reading it, or taking it, cloning your drive and then putting the clone in another machine and reading it. In our case, we wanna clone the drive so that we can upgrade from the old 256 gig to a much larger two terabyte without doing a fresh install of windows and having to reinstall our programs and go through all that hassle if when you search for it you come in here and you go device encryption and nothing comes up you don't get this result that's good you don't have device encryption windows is not showing you the setting because your current bias configuration doesn't support it okay the next thing you need to do is again come in here in this case, I've got a Dell, so I'm looking for Dell update. Um, you know, HP, Acer, all those other brands got similar thing, similar bits of update software. So you can run that, make sure your software is up to date. In particular, you want to make sure that your BIOS is the latest that it can be. Now, in my case, with this specific laptop, I also want to make sure that the SSD firmware on the SSD itself is up to date. Now, the Dell uh, update app doesn't do that for me. So I'll come in here and type in disk management, which is what it used to be called. They've renamed it create and format hard disk partitions. So we'll just let that open up. Loading disk configuration information. There we go. Uh, it's recognized a disk that uh, is my new SSD. Okay, so we can see here this is our this is our C drive, 226 gigabyte partition here, and there's all these other partitions. Importantly, if we right click on this and go properties, we can see what the drive is. It's a KXG 50ZNV256 gig NVMe Toshiba drive. Okay, great. Note that down if we got it because you'll want to search for that and the driver for it. So, open up a web browser, Google, what was it? It's a KXG50, oh look, somebody searched for it in the past, great. And because it's Dell, I want to make sure I get the latest driver from Dell, they've tested with their machines. That's it. And if you've got their little thing, you can make sure it's the one, but there it is. That's our drive. You can see there's a range of sizes it's available in. Fixed an issue where an error message occurs when the drive is not detected. That was exactly the issue I was having. So it may be really important that you update the driver, the firmware driver for your SSD. So once it's downloaded and installed, you can run through the install installer for that. I'll show you what that's like. Here it is. Continue. It'll, in this case, it'll want to extract itself. If we give it a minute, there we go. Unzipped. There's the file. You get the user account control warning. Firmware update wizard. Yes, I want to update. Accept that you are. Next. Give it a moment while it scans for your drive. And there it is. It's recognized it. But in this case, I've already updated, like I said. So I won't need to do that. So cancel out of that, close that. So once you've updated your BIOS and the SSD firmware, the next thing you need is a 
copy of Ubuntu. Now, Ubuntu is a bit overkill um, for what we're doing, but you know what? It's user friendly and we've got fast internet these days, so it doesn't take too long to download. You go Ubuntu download, we want to download the desktop version. Come down here, surrender Ubuntu downloads, desktop, and get the latest stable release. In this case, 23.04, the time of writing. And that'll download. And you see it's 4.6 gigabytes, it's going to take a while. I've already downloaded it, so I'll just stop that now. Then you'll need a program called USB Imager. You can go to either of these, um, probably go to this one, USB Imager, and just hit download for Windows. It's exactly what we want. This program's great, super simple, and you can see it has the same UI across a whole range of different operating systems. So that makes it really simple and user friendly. So we open the zip that downloaded, hit extract, extract, open that file, run the folder. You might get a warning from Windows that the file isn't signed. No worries, hit more info and then you'll be able to run it anyway. because It's a safe file and we know where it's come from. And then get user account control warning. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? You can't see this box because it's on top of my screen recording software, but just click yes. And so the um, USB imager opens up here. It's a great little application, really simple. Hit the three dots on the right. That'll open up an Explorer window. You can navigate to wherever you've saved your Ubuntu image and hit open. Then select your USB drive that you've inserted in your machine. Now I can't stress this enough. Make sure you've backed up anything important that's on it because the entire drive will be wiped when you do this. You can see my drive has a few partitions. It doesn't matter which one I choose. It'll wipe the entire drive. So make sure you've created a backup of anything important on USB before you do this. So pick your USB drive that's going to be your live USB and hit write. Once you've done that, it'll take about half an hour to write to your USB. Once that's done, we can go ahead, close all this down and shut down the machine. Okay, now we've got our USB drive ready. We can plug that in. I've got my NVMe drive still installed. And let's boot up. Now, on the Dell, I need to hit F2 while it's starting to get into the BIOS. Might be delete or holding shift or something on your machine. You'll have to check. You can usually Google a YouTube video on how to get into it on an HP or an Acer or an Asus, whatever it is. Now, the main thing in here, we'll just shut it down. We'll go through boot sequence. You need to make sure um, under advanced boot options, if you're in a Dell, uh, you probably want to have legacy on, although it's not necessary, because it should support your EFI booting. But the main one is to come into SATA operation and change it from RAID on. I'll just zoom in here. Needs to change from RAID on, must be AHCI. You'll probably get a warning like this, just telling you that, hey, and if you change this, you won't be able to boot back into Windows without repairing Windows or reinstalling Windows. So that's fine. As long as we change it back to RAID on again, when we reboot, we'll be right to go. Other than that, you can make sure all the other settings are okay. Like this M.2 setting, just zoom back out. You can see the whole screen. There you go. USB configuration, 
make sure that USB booting is on. We've got enable USB boot support here. Type C dock, power share, we don't really need to worry about anything else. If you've got an SD card in this laptop, if you're using an SD card instead of a USB drive, there's an SD uh, booting switch that you need to enable. Then under security, just make sure that um, the rest of your settings are set to enable UEFI booting. It's not a bad idea to disable any kind of secure boot or things like that. Um, another key thing to do to make sure that your USB drive is actually detected at power on is come down here to the post behavior, go to fast boot, change it from minimal or auto to thorough. And that'll just ensure that it does in fact detect the USB drive so we can boot from it. Otherwise, it'll skip over that to speed up booting time. And you might also want to extend the BIOS post time for a few seconds, just to give you a bit more time to hit the button uh, to get into the um, to get into the BIOS and launching. Okay, so we'll buy all that. That's okay. And exit. Now, this time when we boot, I'm going to hit F12 instead, or whatever it is for your Maker Vibe Top. Preparing a one time boot menu. Okay. So now we can come down here. I want to use UEFI booting. We're going to go UEFI send disk dish number two. We're going to go. Probably can't see that there. I'll just bring you in. Oops, sorry. And zoom up on it. Okay. get some focus but we want to use the first option which is try or install Ubuntu just hit enter I'll just wait this will take a little while because it's going to load the whole operating system from a USB drive which is not the fastest thing in the world. All right. So we've got the syndrome menu. We want English. Next, we want to use the second option. Try Ubuntu. Next. Now we're in the operating system. Okay. So here we are in your booty. First thing you want to do is connect to a Wi-Fi network. Come up here, find your Wi-Fi network. Enter the password and connect. There we go, we're connected. Now the next thing you need to do is download some software called Boolean Etcher. Let's say, um, uh, disk image up and it's designed primarily for cloning bootable SD cards for things like Raspberry Pis and small single board computers but luckily for us there's no real difference between one of those and a full-sized hard drive so it handles everything just fine so again here we need a Debian package so we can follow that link, go to the GitHub release page, come down here to the latest stable release, and we want the one that ends in .deb for Debian. Ubuntu is 
originally based on Debian, which is why we use the Debian package. Once that's downloaded, click on it, click software install and open. Okay, great. Let's go in answer. Let's install that. Great. There we go. That's installed. So we can close this now. Come down to the bottom left and click show apps. Again, click across. We'll be at the end there. Bolina Etcher. So we want this bottom option, clone a drive. And actually, one quick accessibility trick. Just turn on large text. Should make things a little bit more visible for you. So the drive we want to clone from, show the hidden drive, is this one here, our system drive, 256 gig, select that. The drive we're cloning to is this two terabyte drive here. Now, it, my um, NVMe is actually a Corsair drive, but because the USB interface is a Realtek chip, it shows up as a Realtek drive. So that's the one we want. Select that, flash. It's giving us a warning here. Hey, are you sure this is the right thing? Are you sure you want to overwrite an entire two terabyte hard drive? So yes. In this case, I'm sure. You can see it's a little bit out of sorts because of the large font. So I'll just turn that back off. And we'll let this run. Okay, great. So now that's completed, it's going to go through and compare everything on the drive to everything that should be on the drive from the old one. Just make sure that it's copied over correctly. And since this is going to be our new operating system drive and I'd like to wipe the old one, I'm going to let this go. Okay, great. Excellent. Flash completed. It's all worked out successfully. So we can get out of Balloon Ratchet now. Buddy, fantastic. Next thing we want is to open Gparted. That's the GNU Partition Manager. It's this icon here. You can also find it if you type in the search up here. Gparted. There she is. We get a warning. Hey, we've just copied a 256 gig drive to a two terabyte drive. So now a two terabyte drive has 256 gig drive on it. Saying, hey, there's a lot of empty space here. Don't you want to use that? And so, yes, we do. So we're going to fix that. So that'll expand the partition table, cover the whole thing. So when I come up here, select the device, we want our two terabyte drive. Okay, so there it is. And you can see we've got all this unallocated space. Now to make sure this, so we want to expand this. We can't move this out until we move this out of the way. And we don't want to move the left hand side of it either because that'll impact it, the ability for Windows boot, the Windows uh, bootloader to boot from this drive. So we want to leave the left hand edge where it is. So rather than move this or make, um, make a new partition, I want to have this large single partition rather than a multiple separate ones. So to do that, what we're going to do, is we're going to click on this, click resize or move the selected partition. I'm going to mouse over it so we get the uh, cross arrow. Just drag that all the way to the right. Hit resize and move. Just a warning. Hey, if you stuff around with this, it might fail to boot. So you want to do the same thing. You can see that's going to go over there. Do that to the next one. Resize, move. Next one. 
resource move. And just so you know, you can see the actions pending down here. Nothing gets, nothing actually happens. It just queues it all up until you hit click. Now we've got our C drive. So you want to resize, move that one. But this time we just want to drag this end all the way to the right. So no free space before. New size, as big as it can be and no free space after. Great. And you can leave a line to, to what it is, resource move. That's it. Now you can see we'll have a 1.81 1 terabyte drive there. Perfect. For these operations. All right, that's it, great, we're done. All done. So we can close that now. This will refresh. We'll see the basic partition there, that's 1.81 terabytes. And we've used 200 gigs of it. That's it, we're finished in you want to. So now to shut it down, come up here, Click the power icon and you want to just power off. Having re imaged the drive, we can go ahead and, and shut down Ubuntu. We can go ahead and take it back out of here. So we'll just pull up, take that little rubber bung out, take the drive. And I'm just going to sit it to one side for now. We can take the screwdriver. I want a T5 Torx bit. It should be one of these. Should have a little focus. There we are. You'll need to Check which size of screw your laptop takes, of course. I'll just quickly take these out. All right, and there's also one more screw in here that's a Phillips head, so we just need the um, small size Phillips head. I'm going with a, um, oops, where's the camera? Phillips double zero. That's in the middle here. Now, just need to grab my spudging tool. Now I'm back. Yeah, this laptop. I'm going to come around from the front edge. And. All right, here we are, we're in. Take our screwdriver again. And... That should come up. If we don't use that screw. Now, press the image drive.
Yeah. I'm gonna pull the screws first. There's a small piece of tape in this corner. There's a speaker wire. Just carefully peel that off. Take the wire with the battery. There we go. Batteries out. Get that cable in first. Touch that speaker cable now. Plug it in. Let me make that connection. First one I'm going to install. It's going to be a small screw. Let's just check and see if that battery is connected using the um, battery indicator on the side here. There we go, we've got light. Excellent, it's a good sign. Should turn the case and connect these little hooks. Yeah, they're best to slide in that way. Let's go ahead and slot those in. You can clip the rest of them in. So, got that one long screw in the center. I'll do that first while I've still got a Phillips bit attached. So, just put a couple in. Just enough that we can turn it over without the bottom falling off. I'm going to reconnect the power adapter. sign and pause it there all right so here we are to the moment of truth swap the drive over got a new battery open her up now remember first thing to do here don't get too excited we 
would need to um, log into the BIOS. Just zoom in there for you. Power on. Hitting F2. There we go. Need to log into the BIOS and switch the SATA mode back to RAID. So if we come in here, system configuration, SATA operation, back to RAID on. Yes. And everything else should be okay to leave for now. Let's just test it out. Exit. There we are, back in Windows. The sign in here. Just give me one second. Open Explorer. Look at that. There we go. Our nearly full drive. It's nearly empty. I'm going to get all my wife's programs she's got installed. <laughs> Popping up here. God, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. All right. And yeah, I want that one now. But look at that. That's the number we're looking for 1.8 terabytes. Free space. Check out the properties. Beautiful. There's our OS drive. And since I upgraded the battery as well, well, replaced it anyway. You can see, zoom back out, got a full charge capacity of 59,280 milliwatt hours. If I pull up the battery info, Yeah, it's got a new serial number and design capacity, full charge capacity. Great. Great. I'm going to go back into the um, BIOS now. I'll shut it down again. Re-enable all the old options and turn drive encryption back on. Anyway, I hope that tutorial has helped you out. Um, all the best, and thanks for watching.